Welcome this morning to the Grace Hub Lutheran Orthodox Church. Uh, this cloudy spring morning. I'm glad you guys remembered to uh, spring your clocks ahead. That was kind of jarring, you know, losing that hour of sleep. You still lose an hour of sleep in a different way, right? You know. What hard knowledge has taught me from the day of my conversion to now is that the soul is the seat and seed of God's work. The soul is both the essence of life and as a person of faith, that very place where the Holy Spirit moves. Our lives are to be that mercy seat and the fruit born from this place full of grace and new. Voicing your faith, your convictions without the past or the ego and being bold about it isn't going to fit the mold of the world. In fact, it will stir the pot often uh, to violence and murderous intentions. Welcome to walking in the world with an agenda behind and backing your every intentions and the ego's accolades of your past, puffing, up, puffing you up to not even hear or respond from a place of grace where God needs us to respond from. The world feeds and nurtures this gracelessness as an artificial intellectual transaction. In fact, it seems very logical to how we see ourselves to be built upon. A hollow of success, markers of years, while all the while rejecting that one very foundational structure needed for our very life. Christ Jesus the Lord. Jesus is Lord. And I'm not just saying that through the label of being an evangelical. I say it because I really believe it. And we must remember as well, when we've heard that in uh, St. Paul's letters, um, he was pushing the envelope there because at the time, you know, the Roman emperors are supposed to be Lord. And he just put that out in his letter. He just said, Jesus is Lord. You know, just, you know, I'll, I'll take what's coming to me. That's where he was coming from. Witnessing as a disciple of Jesus today is not understood too well in the eyes of the world, and the things that we have puffed up and built up as a barrier to the goal and mission that Christ has for our very lives. A recent witness comes to mind in daring to speak of the heart's transformation and formation to God's will and plans. This was another social media uh, conversation that revealed an interesting uh, set of responses to what it means to journey as a disciple, what the heart's eventual theologizing looks like. Um, it was actually a blessing I was giving to someone who was starting a seminary. Um, we both had the same mentoring pastor for a while, and it actually was an unpleasant discourse with one of her friends. <laughs> Well, I am here today, why I'm here today, I should say, is in a much different place than where I was a few years ago. Okay, that's, that's what the faith journey does. My faith is so strong these days that I feel I am seeing, experiencing the living word come to life all around me as a theology of God at work continually teaching and humbling my heart to see the truth in the world, his world, the kingdom of God. It is like walking through an empty town of tree-lined streets and window shopping, looking in those windows, as we are always too involved with want and need and going past the very thing staring right at us under our very fingertips. But... But now I am seeing him everywhere and in, in nearly everything. Much like John the Baptist, uh, who I've told you I've admired before in so many ways. You know, his was the, was the mouth that just never stopped. He never stopped preaching. He just never stopped pushing the envelope. I put it out there and saying what I felt to this person. What I had to say, however didn't mention or include the fact that I have three masters, six years of seminary, conversion experience, and that here's a pastor talking. 
I said what I said as a person of faith. A naturally built response, plain and simple. What little did I realize I would be verbally assaulted by this person, you know, who has a doctorate, etc., or a couple doctorates, whatever. Basically, uh, intellectualizing and doctrinally analyzing my response and forming one that was, in essence, uh, an antithesis to spiritual formation, Christian development, and witness. At first, I didn't respond with a new nature at all. <laughs> well, <laughs> which, welcome to being human and Italian, you know. Only after a time of cooling down and refocusing, I um, responded in saying, spiritual formation is the heart's knowledge being built to see, do, and experience Christ all around us. It's not an intellectually man-made theology. It is one built by the Holy Spirit in prayer. This has seen no response from said individual whatsoever. In fact, I'm sure after the initial uh, exchange of battling words about spiritual formation versus intellectual systematic theology, yes, all those $20 words, right? The ego drowned out any notion of prayerful listening, acceptance, and consideration, uh, most likely on her end. The parable Jesus directs at the Pharisees in today's gospel uh, examples how we are easily led astray and developing and realizing our natural growing faith. When it is something we don't have enough energy to realize that we can't completely grasp or control an understanding of God, it becomes all too easy. All too easy to build ourselves up with an earthly understanding of accomplishment and be driven from a motivation that is not at all fueled by prayer and humility, but fueled by agenda, politics, and idolatry. You know, we love to love ourselves. The vineyard workers uh, who assault messenger after messenger in the Jesus parable is the nation of Israel, etc., that kind of connection there, um, you know, the last, the son, the Messiah, um, are just like how we are when it comes to dealing with uh the arena of the world, and or world politics in particular. Yes, there's a presidential election going on, taking place right now, and there's a whole lot of labels being thrown out there, generalizations and semantics being hurled about as a violent circus of behaviors. To what avail does all this do? Well, they're even saying, some people are saying it's like the 68 riots. Yikes. I'm like, well, I want to think 1968 was a good year. I was, I was born in that year. But. <laughs> but this is what I have to ask. To what does this all do? Passion is a two-way street. Virtue or vice is the forked road of passion. We can choose to walk down. We make that choice. It's a matter of avoidance uh, and puffed-up importance. As a Christian, I say, don't let the sun, S-O-N, go down and out of your heart. I know, some of you are hearing that Elton John song too, aren't you? Well, I wasn't going to do that in here, no, I promise, no. The heart is that first church, that critical place we need to nurture to truly and truthfully live. A life with no purpose but our own is very empty if you ask me. Within that emptiness there are shadows, darkness, and eventual death. The world is in turmoil over politics, wars, and money. Violently protesting against someone's freedom of speech goes beyond the scarlet letter of partisan politics, for there are merely labels of convenience and condemnation plain and simple. Being judge and jury However, it is very natural for the ego, though. It's natural for us to do. But then this is uh, running rampant in the church as well. Uh, for I even recall a former colleague speak about Jesus as being a socialist. He called him his socialist Jesus. 
Um, I, I'm sorry, but I really do not believe that Jesus is a politician. I will never preach, teach, or lead through any such voice, only the gospel. Being a person of faith in Christ Jesus is to be so much more than our narrow-minded labels and divisionary thinking. Living into a faithful witness as a transformationally motivated leader is building up a priesthood of all believers who are anchored by grace upon the mercy seat of their soul to Christ. We are to die to our old-natured ways. The past is the past and rise in the new. In with and through Christ, the new nature, a glorious future harboring a much greater horizon one where the sun, S-O-N, shines brightly through the natural fruits of grace produced from within us. Being a faithful gardener to that vineyard within our very being is being open to God's witness, not just your own experiences, but from others, being a witness to how faith is working through others. A part of living into loving God and neighbor is spiritually looking inward and to how we accept and receive one another. Hatred, politics, agenda, and verbal slander do not address anything, do not serve anyone but the self. This is too lonely of a world, if you ask me. It's too lonely. But what is there to live for? If everything is all about us and our markers of success, why are we here? What are we really being successful for? The evil one loves to play with us here. Am I right? <laughs> Transaction, greed, and difference have now been incorporated to justify sin, every kind of sin, where boundaries disappear and labels begin. The true reality of hell is an empty, lonely place, a level of existence that equals nothing but death. A death where the ground is cold, hard, impenetrable, and dark. It is as if you were buried with nowhere to go and no chance of the sun as when rising. You are like the lead character in that old uh, 1980s film, uh, Serpent in the Rainbow, that voodoo film. Uh, the man is trapped and paralyzed as tears of feeling truly lost begin to roll down his face. He's trapped. This is the kind of bondage Satan wants us to be eternal prisoners to. I don't know about you, but to live for Christ Jesus is my goal as a child of his grace and promise. I want to live and I want to die to all that the world, sin, death, and the devil wish me to succumb to. I want to break out of that chrysalis, that hardness shell of formation, to be that new natured creation that Christ Jesus needs me to be. He needs us all to be. For his glory and grace. There is so much more to live for. And where it begins is in the heart. Let us pray. Gracious, loving Lord Jesus, help us to realize the cost of discipleship as a new-natured creature of grace. Help us to move beyond ourselves. Help us to break away from the bondage of sin, death, and evil. We are weak, and we must realize what you are calling us to. Help us to be a fire from your living, transforming word. We must be and become bold witnesses with a renewed purpose for your gospel of light, the kingdom of God. 